so the battery. Uh, I'm just going to go through all my materials, the method that I'm going to use to make it, and uh, then I'll just set the camera up and do a time lapse. So I have pre prepped all the stuff I need. We've got all of the cuts of fish paper, which are going to be used between the cell groups, a bunch of different fish paper squares, which are going to be used on different places. Um, thin ones which go over the top and then thicker ones which go between uh, cell groups and then I've pre-cut all of my nickel normal squares which just go between each parallel group parallelogram shaped ones for the boost pack bunch of pre-soldered um, tabs for the balance wires I'm using these instead of using um, squares which come with the tabs because I build lots of different types of battery packs in you know a regular amount so I usually have separate balance tabs to the nickel sheets themselves and then there's the terminal tabs which are basically t-shapes with pre-soldered blobs for me to solder on either bridges or uh, balance connectors you need Six of these, two for the boost pack, um, and then four for the main battery. Uh, you need three of the parallel shaped uh, boost pack nickel sheets. You need 20 or 19 of these ones. I don't remember, I just cut up a load. And then 25 of these tabs. I think I made like 28. When it comes to the cells, 48 Samsung 50S cells. I already got started a little bit with set oh, my table's falling apart. Ah, okay. With setting up the main pack. Oh dear. Fish paper o-rings over the end, all of them are in great condition. And basically the idea is to take the weld frames, which I have printed here out of PLA take four centimeters by seven centimeters line it up to make sure it's straight line up the second cell make sure that's straight and then fold and pinch them in like this what that's going to do is isolate this cell group against the next one so this is the first side of the battery the closest to the tail the furthest from the wheel so the ground of the battery pack is going to be here 10 cell groups and then there will be a positive here of the 10th cell group and then we'll have a terminal on this end which will bridge to the next half. I'll also put up a uh, diagram of how I do all of the balance tab placements but basically you just want as many bridges running off of the negative ends of the cell groups uh, versus the positive ends as possible and then as little overlap along the top of the pack as you can achieve. I uh, just got this bolted together. I did have some issues with fitment. Layers of fish paper between each cell group were just a bit too long and I really had to roll and fold the cells in. The uh, fish paper, you can slightly see it on this one, was sticking out too far below the cells and then that was creating uh, extra thickness um, for the weld frame holster, which was giving uh, a, just a slight error, which was causing the cells to not sit properly. Now I've properly rolled all of the cells inwards and the uh, fish paper is nicely tucked between each cell group and now everything fits properly. So for now I will put glue between each hole to get everything set in place and uh, then we'll get to welding this half. All right, now that the uh, glue is finished, all we're gonna do is um, start using the K-Weld to install the nickel strips. I am using a 6S LiPo to power my K-Weld. Um, it delivers plenty of power, but uh, I wouldn't recommend using a 6S because uh, the higher voltage, the more cells uh, results in higher internal resistance, which creates a lot of excess heat. So. Uh, this is definitely not the perfect power setup, as well as the XT90 connector just sort of creates a lot of uh, excess 
resistance, which uh, you know creates a lot of heat. Um, I do need to upgrade this power supply, but it has worked for a while now. I've been using it for about four or five months. Um, I would definitely recommend a 3S LiPo or a car battery, or if you can, then definitely get the K cap and K supply, which will deliver all the power you need without running into thermal issues. Um, but for now, this works, and uh, that's what I'll be using. Uh, again, I don't have that much in the way of uh, heavy demand for battery builds over here, so uh, this will do for my setup. Um, and yeah, now we'll get into building everything. So I've finished the tailmost side of welds. Um, you'll notice they're all the same. All of the balance tabs are on the negative of the next group. So um, the balance tab for cell group one, which is the cell group here, is attached to the negative of cell group two. Uh, it's just, I find it much more reliable and safer to weld the balance tabs to the negative terminals instead of the positive ones. Um, but now that this is done, flip it over like this. Um, so this is the second most side in from the tail of the board. Um, this side will be the positive bridge running to the second uh, pack off. Um, and for that, we're going to have a terminal weld group here like this. And we want it with the, uh, the solder facing outwards. So when this is folded in, the solder is going to face away from the cells. Um, and then for the negative end, which is the ground of the entire pack, we want the solder facing inwards towards the cells so that when we solder uh, our negative terminal wire to this, it will sit in the notch here between the cell group. So we just want to put that on like this. And then everything else in between is the same as the other side, of course, just alternated. If you don't alternate it, then the pack will melt. Um, yeah, that's that. Alrighty, so now that this half is done, we will disassemble the weld frame and uh, we'll get some fish paper strips on it. Alright, there we go. So that is our pack. And essentially the go now is to take these one and a half centimetre wide strips, fold them in half, and then these are going to sit between... Oh, don't drop it. And then these are going to sit between the... Uh, troughs between each cell. This is going to allow us to fold the balance tabs over without interacting with the cell beneath it, which is very important for, you know, safety and pack integrity, that kind of thing. Um, and then just do that for the rest of it. Uh, then we'll take the pack out, set it aside and start making the second one. Okay, so now that the uh, second pack half is done, uh, I think we'll make a start on the terminals. What we want to do is first apply fish paper ends just to keep everything clean. There we go. So this is 
the outer side done. Now something to note when we do the other pack half is to cut a notch into one of these so that the 12 gauge cable has a place to sit, but it doesn't matter on this one because, uh, well on this side actually, because the 12 gauge cable is going to run on the outside. So now, this is actually already set up in exactly the, exactly the way we want it. Basically what we're doing, soldering on a terminal now, which is just a 12 gauge strip, just like this. Um, solder that on first so that, that way uh, we can cut it to length and solder on an XT60 afterwards. I prefer to do it in that order because that way you uh, have complete control over the length and the positioning of your XT60 output when you're finished. If you solder on the XT60 first then you might cut things the wrong length and uh, have a cable that's bent in the wrong way or something like that. I would recommend adding a bit of fish paper underneath your terminal here just because it's going to get hot and you don't want to melt your table underneath the, uh, the terminal there. So take the 12 gauge, drip it, just tin up the end of this. I don't have a good uh, soldering iron hand set up, so most of the cable work that I'm doing is pretty basic anyway, so it doesn't take a lot of equipment to do this. And then we literally just solder that straight onto the tab. Perfect. Well, something that I should have done first <laughs> is uh, add a strip to that. So this just tucks into the corner between the cells, wraps around them. Perfect. We want to add a little strip over it. Just protect the outside of that tab. And uh, this will all get wrapped and capped on tape later, so if it's uh, fraying out a bit, that's perfectly fine. As long as it stays in place for now, you're good. So that is our positive half. So I'm going to put this off to the side. Right, and here is the ground pack. So the inner side needs uh, no nickel to be showing through to the opposite side, except for the balance tabs. Those won't be matching. Uh, the other side at all, so those are going to be safe. Tell you what, I'm going to put this back into its casing here because you can see that the pack squished itself outwards a little bit. There we go. Same thing on this side. Don't worry about the nickel showing through, of course, on the outer sides because this is just going to be wrapped and capped on tape anyway. So. so, there we go. We will do the ground terminal first and then we will combine the two pack halves together. Ah, you know what I haven't done? Um, exactly the thing that I said I needed to. I need to cut a notch in this piece here just for the 12 gauge to run through. See here, that'll run through there. I don't think we'll need any more than 15 centimeters of cable. We'll give it 20. But unlike the other half, what we're doing here is also creating the ground of the charge plug that comes out of the battery. The positive will be linked to the front boost pack, so we're just going to add this cable and then also uh, the charging plug, which we'll make separately now. So this isn't going to be a live connection on this end for the charger positive. This is receiving voltage from the positive of the boost pack in the front of the board. So. We're going to connect this to the XT30 and then uh, the negative of this XT30 is going to connect to the negative of our tail battery. So let's get that set up. both pieces at the same time, held next to each other, and then just clean the soldering iron set real quick, and melt them both on at the same time. Waiting to see the solder pad on the nickel turn liquid, and as soon as that happens, then we know we're done. Okay, and good. Right, same deal. Folded sheet 
and tuck it on in there. And then fold your output on up like this. Add a bit of fish paper to it just to cover the terminal and you're good. So those are our two halves. There we go, worked backwards. Just to keep things completely secure, I'm just gonna capped on tape the end of the uh, terminals. It's messy, but it's very temporary. Uh, we are gonna line up the pack now, make sure that it is as even as it can be on either end. Of course, we're only wrapping it now because we don't have a battery management system to install. If we did, then I'd just wrap the underside and then leave it clear on, clear on top so that we are able to install that. But we'll be installing the BMS when it gets here in a few months, so it's fine for us. We just want to pull that across. All right, well that's secured our terminal side. What we want to do now is just keep the battery together as we flip it on its back and do the exact same thing. We just want to watch that it doesn't fold outwards because this side isn't secured yet. Okay, and now we just do the same thing. So let's put it down on its side, like this, there we go. Let's do that bridge terminal. So we need to cover both of these sides with fish paper, just like this. I'm gonna trim the width of this a bit because we want this to be a flat piece, just like that, just to support the fold. Our side here has just two tabs, which we're going to solder a piece of braid between, and then those will be done. So we need a piece of 10 centimeter copper braid, roughly 10. That's still warming up. We want to make sure that this is nice and straight. See, that's definitely long enough. In fact, it's slightly too long. We'll make this about eight and a half centimeters and it's in the tips. Very much make sure that once you've, uh, before you solder this on, that you've secured the terminals because if those are shorting, then this is when that will create an issue. Uh, can use this. There we go. This isn't great setup but it will work better than trying to solder something off at the side <laughs> it's much easier to see as well all right there we go get that flowing again excellent okay that's perfect. Okay, so this pack is lining up really nicely. All we need to do now is the XT60 terminal. <coughs> so, pretty easy. We want to line these up with each other. I'd, I'd usually run the XT60 to about halfway down the battery. Um, so right on about two centimeters back off of the negative terminal is where I'd put it. And then maybe four centimeters off of the positive. So we will start with the positive terminal. We're just gonna cut it where we want it. Leave the negative isolated. We definitely want it isolated for now. Um, and we'll start putting down our pieces, heat shrink, and the uh, sheath for the XT60. We will strip the tip of this, get the XT60 soldered onto the positive side, heat shrink it to make sure it's isolated, and then we will do the negative side. So that way everything stays 
isolated, there's no risk of anything, and uh, we get a perfect alignment on the XT60 as well, which is exactly what we want to achieve. Um, okay, wait for the soldering iron to finish, let's get this stripped. Flip the battery. You're doing this exclusively so that we can make it easy to solder on the negative terminal. Click, come on. <sighs> Last click means the battery's done. There we go. All right, sheath is on. There we go, battery is good. Um, now, I would add some extra capped on tape front and back, but for now, I'll just leave it um, as this is pretty much functional. Let's go grab a casing. <coughs> All right, so here's one of the GT battery packs. Now you would lay one millimeter of foam underneath, but we will just leave that for now because that is a permanent thing to do. Oh, there we go, tuck it in from the side. And that is absolutely perfect. Now you can see here, the reason we've done the wiring on this side is because uh, it shifts the pack over slightly and then you've got all this room over the top to put your main positive and negative um, output cables and then also your uh, positive charge line from the boost pack up the front and then you've got a little bit of room here for your lower gauge charge cable to just sit in there you can tuck it in nicely with some tweezers but um, that sets all of that up and you're good to go so Last thing I'll do is just tuck this in a little bit more. Grab ourselves a lid and boom. Perfect fitment, perfect build, good to go. Uh, up next is the boost pack. Um, so I'll get to work on that in a minute. But for now, this just needs a bit of a clean up on the workbench and then we'll be straight onto it. Okay, so the boost pack. The last remaining eight Samsung 50S cells will go into a weld frame that I uh, typically use for 18S 2P packs for the one wheel XR type. Um, and uh, this is just a good weld frame for placing staggered cells. Uh, obviously I'll only be using the first four cell sections to just weld this all up. Uh, there aren't many welding connections to do here and the balance terminals are really simple as well and uh, that should be it. Alrighty, so we finished all of the welds on the time lapse there. We've covered both sides with uh, fish paper. We've got the pack negative terminal here. We've got the pack positive terminal here exposed. Um, the solder on the inner sides of both so that when we fold them over, the uh, 12 gauge power output cables will sit in these notches between the cells just to save up on a bit of space. Uh, we've got four balance tabs here on the top, four cell 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, and uh, there's fish paper in between these cells on the top to protect the balance cables when those do go in. Uh, 
wrapped up the bottom, glue between all of the cells, and of course, all cell groups are isolated with fish paper from one another. So this is done now, and all we need to do is make the um, wiring harness, which is gonna go around the whole thing. Basically, what I'm gonna do is uh, solder a 12 gauge positive cable to this one, and then fold it in. That cable is gonna wrap around the side of the pack here and return to the tail. That'll be, this will be the corner which is closest to the power plug for the VESC. So uh, the positive cable will come out here, um, as well as the negative bridge, which will come directly from the main battery in the tail. And then the input for this battery will be soldered onto a cable here, which will come out um, of this channel and sit in the same spot. So you'll have an XT60 facing this way, which will connect to the uh, tail battery, and then one this way, which will connect to the VESC. And then this will act as a boost for the positive line, and then there'll be a bridge connecting the negative. Um, and that's that, that's how we achieve a boost pack configuration. I'll uh, get to making that now, I'll do it on time lapse and then explain it afterwards. Okay, so now that the pack is wrapped up, we can do the final terminals, which is the most important part. Um, this red one here is the negative of the boost pack, and uh, these two here are both the positive of the main power and then the positive for return to the charger slash BMS. So the smaller gauge, we will solder with a bullet connector, and uh, the other two, we will basically have split in this direction for an input and an output uh, to boost the positive voltage. Um, so we will receive the main terminal charge here from the battery in the tail. Uh, the negative of the XT60 port will be bridged across to the next one and uh, then this port will go to the VESC. It's also worth noting as well that because the uh, charger output is live, as in it's the positive, um, we will be using a, a female output for it to connect to a, uh, a male output from the main wiring harness. This is the completed boost pack. Um, of course, we don't have battery management system yet as per the tail pack because we don't have a 24 SBMS currently, but it'll be fine without for a little bit until we do. As you can see, uh, input from the main wiring harness uh, goes to the negative of the boost pack, four cell groups to parallel, main positive runs outside and uh, comes back over here this will then plug into the VESC, which sits next to the boost pack. You have a negative bridge to connect the VESC to the negative of your entire power system. And uh, yes, this will match up with your main battery, which sits in the tail. So you can imagine this sitting in the front casing, charge positive going through a bullet connector through to the tail also connecting through a bullet connector. This connects to your battery management system, which connects to your charge port, set over here. You have your main battery terminal from your 20S2P pack. This goes back out and then connects into here, which then boosts it up with a 4S2P booster. Main output here to your VESC, creating a 24S2P power system for your Val GT. There we go. That is everything. I think that's about almost a half an hour video of content. So 
Right now I'm waiting for another Superflux motor before I start building the control system and the wiring harness for this board. Um, that'll be another separate video. Um, and then in a few months time, once I've received an SSBMS, I will be installing that and then doing a third video. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, but yeah, next video will be the controller and wiring harness and then after that uh, probably a full assembly video with bumper modification um, and just bolting the whole thing together just how that works pretty simple and um, then yeah BMS video and how to install that eventually should be straightforward okay that'll do for now awesome thanks for sticking around